Hello, guys, and welcome to day four of the Tricks with Countdown. I am Yo Armanderis. I am your host for this particular trick and the owner of Canine Learning Academy, as well as a certified dog trainer. So before I get started, let me know if you can see and hear me. And I'm going to double check on Facebook to make sure I can. Yes, I can. Perfect. So let me know in the comments. So wherever you are watching this live, whether it's on our YouTube channel or right here in the Facebook group, um, if you type a comment, I'm able to see those comments and I can pop them up and answer them as we go. But today is day four. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate in today's live trick is different than what you might see on Instagram. Um, I did post something on Instagram that will be posted a little bit later as well as our regular Facebook page. So I switched the two tricks from day four and day five because I didn't have the prop for tomorrow's trick, So, which was a box. So I'm going to go ahead and do today's trick, which is going to be sit pretty. So sit pretty. I'd love to hear from you if you're watching live, if you've ever taught this trick to your dog, sit pretty. If you're brand new to the group, I again am Yo Armanderis and I am here doing a different trick. So 12 tricks total and then one bonus on Christmas day that you can work with your dog. My goal for you is just for you to do something with your dog every day. Even if you don't go all the way through the end goal of the trick, just show, demonstrate, take picture, or even comment saying, hey, this was useful. Um, I did, you know, get a little chance to practice. So those of you welcome, those are new to the group, welcome. And I have uploaded all of the tricks um, that are live. I've uploaded it to our YouTube channel. So there's a playlist. It'll make it a lot easier if you want to watch it later or if you want to share it with a friend or family member, you can share the entire playlist and they'll all be kept there. So there'll be a total of 13 tricks when we're done with this Christmas Tricksmas countdown. All right. Let me know again. Can you see? Can you hear me? I am streaming live from La Quinta, California. I am headed out today to go back home. So my home is in Sunset Beach, California. So once I get back home, I will uh, be able to stream from there. Now, tomorrow we have a real special event. So before I go over today's trick, tomorrow we are doing a Christmas show a performance with all of our trick master students, the ones that could make it for tomorrow's class. It is going to be at 9 a.m. And the story is about a dog that saves Christmas. It's a very quick story. I think it's about eight or nine pages. And we've got a handful of our students that are going to be performing some of these tricks from the story um, live. Now you can watch this on our YouTube. Um, if you watch, if you go to our YouTube channel and you click the link to like or subscribe to our channel, there's already a live button for that performance that will be streaming live tomorrow at 9 a.m. PST. And it'll be there afterwards. So if you can't make the live, you can always watch it later. And then do me a big favor. If you are able to watch and you do watch their performance, please give them some props and some likes and some hearts because it is kind of nerve wracking when you're performing live with your dog. You never know how it's going to turn out, right? All right. So let's go ahead and get started with this today's trick. So it's called Sit Pretty. And this trick is also a good stretch for dogs and it strengthens their core muscles, right? And um, the core muscles help protect your, their dog's spine and could prevent injuries. Now, this is a great, great trick for healthy dogs, right? Healthy dogs. If your dog has a pre-existing injury, then I would consult with your vet before trying this trick. Now, the where the danger comes in is because when they're putting their weight onto their two back paws and the weight is lifted, it's a lot of compression in their knees, hips, and even in the ankle joint. So um, just be aware, hey, Stephanie, just be aware that that could cause um, some, some, pro some injuries or, what are you doing? Okay, you got your toy. So, um, be careful. If your dog is not fully grown, same thing, be careful. But I will show you some alternative things that will help strengthen the core without doing a sit pretty. 
Now, the goal for this trick is that your dog sits on their back legs and curls their front legs in front of them. Now, as we progress to more advanced tricks, there are there are some tricks in which the dog will hold something with their front paws or they'll beg, right? But the beginning is just getting into that position. So again, so the goal again is your dog will sit up and they'll put their weight on, your, on their back legs and the front legs will be out in front of them. It would also require that your dog already knows a sit. Ideally, they do know a sit. My dog, Bandit is like, nosing me with his nose to, for me to pet him. Okay, buddy, I gave you some scratches. So to begin the training, make sure that the floor that you're using is slip proof. So no wood floors or tile floors where it can be really slippery because they're going to want, you want them to sit down and not have to worry about their feet placement. Um, comfortable to sit on. So something plush like a carpet or a uh, bath mat, something like that, that your dog's comfortable sitting. If your dog doesn't want to sit, typically it means maybe something's bothering them or the flooring is either too cold, too hot, too hard, and all of those things. So just be mindful of that. Carpet or rubber flooring works the best. Now, in a room free from distractions, this is where you would start this trick. This is not a trick that you would go and teach in a public uh, class with a lot of people if your dog's still not comfortable being around other dogs. So be mindful of that. The very beginning of the trick is you want to tell your dog, um, cue them to sit. You want to reward the sit because you want them to want to stay and sit. So don't be so focused on the trick that you don't forget that that's the default position. That's the position. That's the starting position. So always reward the sit. You also want to make sure your dog's a little warmed up. So make sure they're coming in from a walk. It's a great time to do it after they've warmed, after they've done a little bit of exercise. So again, like I like to do sit, stand, um, down, spin in both directions and a little bit of backup just to get those feet moving. We just came in from a walk, so it's perfect to uh, begin now. So I'm going to go ahead and start the training uh, and I will talk you through, I'm going to just go over the first, first, first few steps. So first it is, so Stephanie, really quick, have you taught sit pretty with your dogs or anybody that's watching live? Have you done sit pretty? Now, back when I first, uh, I guess when I had Bentley, one of the ways that they taught sit pretty was to have the dog brace on your arm, right? Well, you're going to see with Bentley, I've never went, it is never able to get him to strengthen his core enough to be able to do this on his own, right? You did good. So it is better for smaller dogs because they're, it's easier for them to be more stable and, you know. It's easier if the dogs are smaller. Yes, <laughs> not the pointer because of the ACL issues. Perfect. If you have a larger dog, they require more core strength, right? So let me begin the training with, uh, let me just get, let me see if Bentley will do this first. So we're going to start with the sit position. I'm going to use a clicker. After we get a sit position, all we're going to do is progressively bring our hand up a little bit higher so that the weight comes off, the shift of the weight comes off of the, the, the front paws, okay? So that's all we're looking for. So here's your sit, right? I'm going to pay him right in his neutral position so his body is aligned up, and you'll see that there's weight on his front paws. But as soon as I bring that up a little bit higher, what happens is he's going to shift his weight to his back paws. You want to click for that and reward because that's the beginning of the trick right? Just that little shift in the weight. So let me see if I can start this from the very beginning with Bentley, who doesn't have this as well as Bandit does. Okay, let's go. Sit. Yes. All right, I'm going to move Bandit out of the way for a little bit, just for a little bit. There you go. Okay, so you guys can see. Now I'm going to bring Bentley sideways so you can watch that that shift in his weight Come here. oh my goodness you guys just hit my cord <laughs> all right let's try that again so i'm going to toss a treat to reset yeah. good sit all right so watch the shift in the weight 
Good. Nice top, Bentley. So I currently have food in my hand. Nice. Okay. So you'll notice, thank you. Good. All done. You'll notice that he is shifting his weight back. And there's a couple times where his front paws came up for a quick second. I marked at the beginning for that shift in weight. I gradually delayed my mark and I waited for a little more, uh, you know, a little more weight shift till finally his paws, his front paws came off the ground, right? Now you notice he went to his go-to, which is trying to, I'm sorry, trying to grab my um, arm to help with his balance, right? So that is what makes him feel comfortable. And that's natural for a dog who doesn't have the core strength or the confidence to do this trick for them to grab your arm like he did. Okay, double check. Let me make sure you guys can hear me. Can you hear me okay? He hit my, mic, my, my headset off. I think you can. All right, so any questions on that? Now that particular um, step, that shifting of the weight may, I would recommend repeating over and over in tiny short sessions. And as you progress, your dog will become steadier on their hind legs. This is not something you're going to do all in one session. You're going to do tiny reps. You saw me do four or five repetitions. That's all. Then I might do it a little bit later in the afternoon, but it might take days, weeks, if not months or years before your dog can finally do this particular trick. So mark, praise, reward while they're in position. All right. So I'm going to progress a little bit more. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to build duration, extending the time that I have my dog hold that position. All right. So let's go from here. Thanks, Stephanie. <laughs> okay. I'm doing it with Bentley because I've really not um, worked with him on this one as much as Bandit. Okay. So again, I'm going to start with the sit position. Sit. Yes. All right. Let me get my food ready. So right now I still have food in my hand and gradually I'm going to get the food out of my hand. So I'm going to start just with that little shift. So notice that I'm going towards the nose and slightly up. Good, he's bringing those paws up. Good. Now my arm is parallel to the ground. Now gradually, I might let him hold his paws up there to help strengthen the balance like that. See, so he's got one paw in there. Nice. Now let's say we've done a lot of repetitions and it's you know days, weeks, months later. We wanna to start to have him work on his own cord because it become dependent on it. So what we could do, watch the shift in my hand. Good. So what I did there is I went from here, him, his, his weight supporting on me to gradually moving my hand. Now, in order to forget that duration that you see there, what I'm doing is I'm pinching the food and he's nibbling on it. So check it out again. I'm going to do it again. There we go. Good one. So in that last one, he didn't put his arm up there. And I don't mind that he puts his arm up there because he is just nice. No, okay, here's now building duration. Okay. Now there, he's getting a lot of support there. Go ahead, take it. So I'm gonna start to move my arm. <laughs> there we go, now he's got, there we go, okay. All right, I'm going to give him a little break. I'm going to move on to Bandit. Can't. All right, Bandit, your turn. Come on, let's go. Come on, Bandit. Okay, Bandit, lay down. Good. Okay, Bandit. Lay down. So for a dog like Bentley, who doesn't have the core strength to do this, still learning, I recommend doing some balancing exercises. So right now, he's doing a lot of weight on his back paws, right? The weight is going to his back legs. So I might work on paws up 
on an unstable, just to keep him balanced, you know, from, from working so much, so much weight on the back, I might work some stuff on the front to keep him balanced, but also working just on a little bit of an unstable surface. So this is a little piece of foam and it's got a little bit of a wobble when the dogs get on it. There's a, just a tiny bit of movement which helps build the stability muscles around the core. You can also use things in your house like pillows or cushions, things like that, where they're having to watch where their placement is on their hands or the paws. All right, so let me go over with Bandit now. And we'll progress to a little more duration. Okay, so Bandit is tiny. Come here, Bandit. Bat me up here, up up, bat me up up. Good, nice dolphin. All right. So for band, I'm still gonna put food in my hand and I'm gonna start just clicking for sit. Okay. Then we're gonna go up a little bit higher. Good. So notice his duration is a lot longer. Now I'm paying in position. Good boy. All right, so come here, good boy. Let's do it again. So very nice. And now he's offering the position without a lure. So once you've got food in your hand, your dog's doing it consistently, you wanna get the food out of your hand and turn it into a hand gesture at first, or you can go into verbal cue. So to turn that into a hand gesture, get the food out of your hand, but put your hand the way that you did before. Now watch closely because this is really important. So I'm gonna do the same gesture. Yes, I'm gonna click or mark and then I'm gonna transfer the food into that hand. Good job, buddy. So here's no food in this hand. Yes. And then I'm gonna bring the food from the other hand and pay him in position. Very nice, very good. To build duration, let's go you can continue to feed that hand. So check this out. Yes. Let me see if, yeah. Okay, let me move him out of, okay, give me, good boy. Come here, come here, closure. There we go. So I'm gonna do the hand gesture. So this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to turn this into a verbal cue. So I'm gonna go ahead and say my verbal cue before I do a hand gesture. Big. Yes. I'm gonna pay, but you can continue to take that other hand, put food in it, and reward the other hand that was the hand gesture. Good. Very nice. So his hand cue is this. His verbal cue is big. So watch the hand cue. <laughs> Come on. Yes. I'm going to pay. He can hold the food in place, or I can pass it. Now, once you've got the duration like this, I would remove the hand and pay, right? So I would remove this hand and then pay, move this hand and then pay. Okay, all done. All right. So that's probably as many repetitions as I wanna do with my dog for, the, for this trick, but that was pretty much all of the steps um, broken down pretty quickly, but let me go through them again. So step one, Reward the sit position. Let me know if this was helpful, guys. <laughs> Step two, you want to bring the treat up just one or two inches above the nose so their weight shifts. So the criteria for that, for their mark, is a shift in the weight. The weight's coming from the front weight, front paws, shifting to the back. That's your first one. Next, weight off the front paw. So there's a little bit of lift. Even if it's just one paw, you're going to mark for that one. So that was your step three. Step four, both paws off the ground. That's your step four. And then from there, you can build a tiny bit of duration. So just to just hold the food in place. So after they get into the position, hold your food in place and let them eat in place. From there, you're going to get the food out of your hand, switch it to a hand gesture that looks exactly the same way that you presented it last time. And then from that point, you can turn it into a verbal cue. 
After you get it on a verbal cue, you can then generalize the behavior. So you notice that I am on the floor with my dogs. So my next step would be able to back away and do this while I'm on my kneeling or if I'm standing up. And gradually, I can do this at a distance in another room and things like that, right? So those really advanced tricks that you see when a dog jumps up on your back and then does a sit pretty, they're going through a lot of steps to get the dog comfortable enough to do that trick, understand what that trick actually, you know, what the cue is for that trick and be able to do it from a distance. All right. So remember those steps, write them down if you need to. Otherwise this will be, um, this particular tutorial will be up on YouTube. You can watch it a little bit later. If your dog is struggling with balance, remember to throughout your training is work on balance. Just work on some things that are more keeping, you know, you can balance on a ball. If you hold a ball, you can balance on uh, grass. You can use grass as another good one because it's a little unstable. Pillows that you have around the house. Um, and uh, give that a try. So you notice that I did in the training part of it, I was showing you this view where I'm here and the dog is here because I wanted you to see the shift in the weight. So if you'd like to send a tutorial video to our group and have us take a look at it, um, I'd recommend filming that way. Now, when you're shooting a picture, you can shoot it from front where the dog is looking at the camera sitting pretty. You can do the side one where you have your hand up high, right? And you're cueing them and they're looking up and they're putting their paws up. Um, later on, you can work on your dog holding a toy in their mouth and then sitting pretty, which is another trick that we have a little bit later. All right. I think that was it. Was that helpful? Let me know. I'm, tired on me. I'm headed back to Sunset Beach. I'm going to jump in the car and be on the road for a few hours. But uh, thank you guys for joining me live. And let me know if you're going to give that trick a try. So this was Sit Pretty. Thank you. Safe travels. Thank you. And don't forget tomorrow, tune in. On our YouTube, we are doing a live performance with some of our Trick Master students, and the story is called The Dog That Saved Christmas. All right, guys, have a wonderful Friday and welcome. Do more with your dog. Let's see you have some fun with your dog. Those of you that are sick, I've heard some of you are sick over the winter. Save this, watch it later, and do it when you can. All right, guys, thank you for joining me live. Take care.